Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. In this video, we'll try to draw an outline classification of the complete animal kingdom. So all these animals are mainly classified into two main groups and this classification is based on presence or absence of notochord. So if notochord is absent, we call them non-chordate. And if notochord remains in any part of the life, it could be embryonic throughout the life or only during a stage, then they would be called the chordates. So here we are talking about non-chordates. Notochord is absent. Now these non-chordates are further divided or classified into phylums. The first phylum is Porifera. And in Porifera, we include sponges. So here we'll be talking about the sponges. We will be talking about all these phylums and their examples in detail. The second phylum after Porifera is Nidaria. Its new name is Nidaria. The older term which was given to this phylum was Cylindrata. And in this, we include animals like Hydra. Then the next phylum is Pinophora. Fourth one is Platyhelminthes. In this, flatworms are included. The fifth one is Aschihelminthes. In this, round worms are included. The next phylum that we talk about is Anilida. Here we talk of earthworm, leeches, nerus. The seventh phylum is Arthropoda. In Arthropoda, there are various classes in which we will be talking about insects, insecta, crustaceans, arachnids. The next one after Arthropoda is Mollusca. Here we talk of uh, the animals which have shells like snails or without shells that is octopus. The ninth phylum is Echinodermata. Echinodermata includes starfish type of animals. And the tenth one which we write here is actually Hemichordata. Hemichordata is considered as a link it shows very few chordate characters and most of the characters are non-chordate characters. So when we come to this, we'll take examples and we'll try to understand. Now this chordata or chordates, they are classified again into three categories on the basis of where this notochord is found. If it is only in the tail region, we call them urochordates. If it is head to tail, then they are called cephalochordates. And in animals where this notochord gets completely replaced by vertebral column, then they become the vertebrata. So we further classify these vertebrates. Now vertebrata is again divided into two groups on the basis of whether they have jaws or not. So these are without jaws. So they are known as a natho, a natho stores. And if mouth with jaw is present, then they are known as natho stores. A natho stores, they are called jawless. And they look like fishes, so we call them jawless fishes. Nathostomes, that means they have jaw, they are further classified on the basis of the locomotive structures. 
locomotive structure and here we are talking about the presence or absence of jaw now when we talk of locomotive structures if fins are the locomotive structures then that group is known as pisces and if there are limbs which help in locomotion and these limbs are four the four limbs and the hind limbs then they are known as tetrapoda the fishes that is pisces they are further divided into two categories that is bony fishes or osteichthys and cartilaginous fishes that is chondrichthys and tetrapoda is classified into four categories that is amphibia reptilia apes or birds and mammalia so this is how we have a brief complete outline of classification of animal kingdom and we have to talk about all these groups and also understand the criteria which was used for classification so the first criteria which was used which was the main one that is the notochord presence or absence of notochord so all these which we have listed here they do not have notochord now when they have notochord if it is only tail region then urochordates if it is head to tail then they are cephalochordates and here notochord is replaced by vertebral column that is the backbone the next classification is with the criteria whether they have jaw bones or not and the next is on the basis of locomotive structure and in case of tetrapods again there are multiple things which are taken into account that is habitat reproduction types of limbs adaptations etc so this is how we have classified the complete animal kingdom now from the next class or next video we will be talking about all these phyla one by one we will take general characteristic of each phylum and then some important examples which are kept or included in each of these